Blade Arc. The Arc of Blades is a soldier skill that is a main attack skill. It's used in either a spammable mode or a giant big hit, then go on cooldown mode, depending on whether or not using the transmitter. And it's a pretty solid ability as a bleeding ability. So let's just get right into the text box now. Blade Arc, an arced swing that slices through multiple enemies around you, requires a melee weapon. Blade Arc, put simply, funk, 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 funk. So, big arcs of blade directly in front of you. That is the second time I've said that. It has a lot of things going on. So, the first is it has, it has an arc being Blade Arc. <laughs> so it'll hit in a degree around you. It, hit, it hits a number of targets based on the skill rank around you. It deals your weapon damage, it deals bleeding damage, and with the cooldown ability, you get a chance to knock down. Actually, I think there's just a chance to knock down anyways. It, the cooldown ability just increases it. It has one transmitter and one modifier. The, tr the modifier is laceration. Expert technique causes blade arc to strike more enemies and to tear them open, causing bleeding. So this increases the arc, adds more targets on, adds internal trauma damage, crit damage, and percent bleeding damage. Um, it's a, I guess you could say, a pretty standard addition to the main attack, on top of adding internal trauma damage on. And that's important because bleeding damage doesn't work against undead. They don't bleed, they're undead. However, internal trauma damage does. Internal trauma damage, as far as I know, is not resisted by anything. Maybe it's resisted by physical resistance. It's sort of the dot associated to physical damage, but it basically lets you bleed anything in the game. Blade Arc's transmitter is Clean Sweep. A more powerful form of Blade Arc in which the soldier builds power between attacks to unleash it in one focused burst of intense damage that can knock foes to the ground. This adds a skill recharge to it, adds bonus crit damage, increases the damage by 175%, you generate additional threat so it kind of taunts um, while you're blade arcing. And there's a 50% knockdown duration added to the blade arc. So it makes blade arc kind of a CC mixed with uh, a taunt while upping its damage immensely. In class synergies, so blade arc deals bleeding damage and internal trauma damage. So your main synergies are really gonna come from O'Liran's Rage, which gives you percent internal trauma damage, and the internal trauma damage on Zolhan's technique. Otherwise, because it's dealing main hand damage, you're gonna be dealing a lot of physical damage. So anything that affects physical damage is gonna help you deal more damage with your blade arcs. Um, I think there's bleeding on the middle form of Cadence, but I don't think you're combining blade arc with Cadence. You're choosing one or the other. And there's internal trauma on Force Wave, but again, you're choosing one or the other pretty much. Otherwise, you're not really synergizing that much in the soldier, in the soldier tree. It's a main attack ability, it deals main hand damage, so it synergizes in that way. Um, otherwise, the internal trauma damage is really where you get the crossover. The main place I'd take it would be with the either Warder or Blade Master setups. In this case, my Bleeding Blade Master um, went way deep on the Night Blade. Really, just as a personal note, I probably would have flipped it around and gone way deep on the Soldier side. But um, way deep on the Night Blade side, you can do a wield, pick up Whirling Death, which is the bleeding ability on the Dual Blades line, and you can actually combine it with Execution, because you are dealing main hand and offhand weapon damage when you're dual wielding, and you get that health reduction on the enemies. Oh, incidentally, Warcry with health reduction on enemies, as I mentioned in the Warcry video, to something that's bleeding or poisoned or internal traumaed, um, is awesome, because you, you essentially reduce their overall health and then they're just dying, dying quicker. So having the health reduction is quite powerful. The Blade Spirit is also a bleeding damage ability. Um, the Spirit on its own will just wander around hitting things for your bleed damage. Um, there's bleeding damage on Phantasmal Blades, but again, you're probably using Blade Arc over that. Um, Ring of Steel, uh, Ring of, S or Circle of Slaughter is what you're gonna go for with that, because you can pop this on cooldown while you're either spamming Blade Arcs or using Blade Arc on cooldown. Um, just for more more bleeding damage in there. Um, I would actually recommend using Blitz over Shadow Strike just because it deals physical damage. Um, and you can actually throw a point 
on blindside to mesh the internal trauma damages. Um, Shadow Strike is more for a cold piercing acid build. Um, Veil of Shadow and Night's Chill, I'd actually probably pass on in this case. And then um, Blade Trap does deal bleeding damage, can deal quite a bit of bleeding damage. But since you're in melee, you're not going to get as much value out of it. And the big old thing to pick up is Anatomy of Murder, and I would probably recommend capping it out since it's a lot of percent bleeding damage. That will just build up Blade Arc to a nice huge amount of damage in one swing. And I am, I am in this character's case using the Clean Sweep ability. So the other big synergy is with the Warder. You're going to be doing a two-hand build in this case. And you can build it as a Primal Strike Warder, a Savagery Warder, but you can combine together either Blade Arc as a spammable ability with Primal Strike, or you can use Primal Strike as a spammable ability with Blade Arc in its cooldown form. Or you can use Savagery as your spammable ability and put both of them in their cooldown forms. And there's a lot of options to go with in that combination of those three abilities. Um, you also get the Brute Force line for its bleeding damage on um, Feral Hunger and the bleeding damage on Upheaval. Wendigo Totem, um, it doesn't deal bleeding damage on its first part, but the Blood Pact does deal bleeding damage. Er, yeah, it deals bleeding damage. Um, <clears throat> and this will also keep you alive. It's a good little bit of healing while you're sitting there arcing through enemies. I mentioned Primal Strike, its main ability doesn't have it, Torrent doesn't have it, but Storm Surge does. So you would probably do um, single point, single point, max that out. Um, you can use it in the spammable version or the cooldown version, either way. But generally speaking, like I mentioned, you're going to have one on cooldown, one is the spam. And that's up to you which way you go. And if you're working Savagery in, I would recommend both of these in their cooldown forms. And in Savagery, its main ability has the bleeding damage. If you're using a two-hander, you'll probably want to pick up the Might of the Boar ability. Um, tenacity to the Boar can actually be really helpful, because it'll build up your offensive ability and let you hit your big sweepers easier. And eh, Storm Touched, maybe you want to pick it up. Um, Really, though, I think the first two abilities are just fine for that. Uh, Grasping Vines um, and Entangling Vines, it is bleed damage, but mm, maybe you go for it, maybe you don't. That's up to you. Devouring Swarm does reduce bleeding resistance, so maybe you could build this as your main spamming attack and then turn around and sweep around with the blade arcs. For this, if you go all the way down for an exclusive skill, you're probably going to want to pick up, oddly enough, primal bond because of the percent bleeding damage on it and because it also gives pets bonuses you might want to consider ticking a point in conjure primal spirit at that point it could work that you're doing a a weird hybrid build maybe that you're sitting there with these big old sweepers and you're gonna like just sweep into the enemy let them start bleeding to death and then run away and let your pet kill everything um maybe it's a weird setup that could possibly work but you'd have to gear for it and it'd be a little weird on the gearing in all honesty. I think the only other bleeding stuff is in the Warlock tree and that's only really on the bloody pox. Otherwise, I think your two big setups are Warder and Blade Master. For items, I don't have the set, but it is the Blood Rager set that has the Savagery Blade Arc combo on it. So if you're building a bleeding Warlord, Warlord, jeez, um, Warder, uh, that is the set to go for. Otherwise, for items, I think the big one is Grass of Unchained Might. It has physical internal trauma and bleeding damages, attack speed, plus two to Blade Arc, and the Unchained Fury ability is really, really nice. Yeah, you lose defensive ability, but it's a tiny amount of defensive ability for a nice amount of offensive ability gain and attack speed gain. Otherwise, just just put in some uh, put in bleed damage things. I mean, there are more items that support uh, Blade Arc, but that is the main item to me that you go for. And you can run Blade Arc 
um, with one weapon and a shield, uh, dual wielding like this, or with a two-hander. All are legitimate options for for running a bleed-based blade arc character. Um, you'll build them a little differently, but for the most part, they all build the same. And yeah, that's not much, not much else to say about the items. Now for devotion, um, ignore this guy's devotion. He's using an old setup. I think a lot of people would want to come over here to the unknown soldier and for the living shadow. And yeah, I think it could be really awesome because you get essentially free summons that will be dealing bleeding damage for you. You can attach it to blade arc and use blade arc in its spammable form to get a lot of these out basically every time you crit and uh the tree itself has some good support for a blade arc setup mostly you're going to be using that in the blade master form and then down here for olirin who's always been really hard to see for me he's in here trust me um <laughs> there is blind fury and blind fury um you attach it to an ability obviously and it just gives you a, a bunch of flat damages in addition to its main damage um, burst. I don't know if I'm actually going to go for Olirin for this particular character setup. I don't think I've ever seen anyone say, oh, it's a must pick. But uh, I might. I don't know. Up in the air on that. You could also go for um, Mogdrog and the Wolf. It's all about that bleeding damage. And you reduce the target's defensive ability, which is pretty solid. The tree itself gives you um, a lot of bleeding damage and some nice resistances. The rend ability on the Huntress, also a bleed damage based thing, and it reduces the target's bleeding resistance. So I think these two together could be something really nice if you're using this on, uh, on one of your... You'd probably want to do it on the cooldown version of Blade Arc, honestly or an ability that has a percent to proc because it'll increase the chance of that happening. And then you can, oh, you could either go either way, I think. Um, Hollow the Wolf would be another really solid just bleed ability. Um, they're both really solid. I'd probably pick up both in all honesty. And that's probably what I'm gonna go for for this character's devotion setup. It's just getting to that requires going through some not bleeding based things, which is a little annoying sometimes. But yeah, there's some internal trauma damage stuff in the uh, the hammer and anvil here. And your falcon swoop ability is your sort of first bleed ability. You get through the ascendant line. And yeah, I'd put that on. I just put that on one of the things as well. Um, I wouldn't make it my main attack ability though. I'd probably attach it to something on cooldown to get it to proc when that thing pops. Oh, uh, assassin's mark, probably a good thing to pick up as well. And I think this character is going to go through Assassin's Mark. Blades of Wrath could be really good. Which is a burst of blades around you. It's one of those, I think, um, you'll see the Blood Briar use it, I think. Old Blood Briar. It's, that's the animation for it. It's like the, the tiny needles that Nova out from the, from the character. If you're using swords, Blades of Nadan can be really helpful as well. If you're using a shield, you're probably going to want to come up to here. Um, maybe, maybe Maul could work. Um, yeah, if you have a shield, the hammer or the anvil works. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, trample works as well, if you have a shield. Two solid shield abilities right there. There are a lot of options, like I said, to go two-hander, dual wielding, or a shield. Um, I don't really think there's anything else. I wouldn't go up here for the defensive stuff. I'd mostly go dps on this character. Because this character, the whole point to, to bleeds and the poisons to me, just the dot builds, is to whack the enemy once for a lot of whatever that damage is and then run away. <laughs> because you can just leave them to die and then run away and whack the next group of enemies. Um, and then repeat as needed. But uh, yeah, you're mostly going the Ascendant um, Eldritch route. Maybe up to law as well. So probably, yeah, basically whatever these three are. Er, no, that's chaos. Crap. Oh, right. Um, I will point out, because um, you're going to be swinging weapons, that the Revenant might actually be a nice choice as well, because you'll get the uh, two 
attack damage converted to health nodes. And some attack speed nodes. Probably would skip on the ability, though. And I don't think... Is there anything else that bleeds? Vitality damage, chaos fire, fire, pet thing. Those two don't. Does this guy do it? Oh, yeah. If you got an axe, you can actually go and pick up the berserker. And this might be an interesting... Okay, so if you're using an axe, it might be interesting to go Ascendant and Eldritch. Then come over here and pick up the Berserker, because it'll unlock Chaos. Then just... That's two, you need ten... Or no, you need eight. So yeah, you could go and do, like, say, this Chaos Point, the Berserker, and the Vulture. And then pick up the Revenant. Still while picking up your, your two big constellations down here. So yeah, a lot of options to go for. You can go for Aliran, you can go for the Unknown Soldier, Mogdragon the Wolf, the Huntress, the Berserker, Blades of Nadan. Um, you can go defensive, you can go offensive. All in all, it's actually... I'd probably say there's more variation in this Devotion. In the Devotion setups you can do for this ability, for this damage type, for bleeding, than a lot of other characters, actually. And that's kind of funny given I only listed two class combos. Alrighty, that is my Blade Arc video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's the first attack ability we're doing from the soldier tree. I don't know what I'm gonna be doing next because I finished off the Arcanist um, and we're going into sort of abilities that I may not have a build for. So it's gonna be kind of interesting to make these going forward. And I'm probably just gonna check off all the abilities I have builds for because it's just that much easier. And then go back and like redo some characters to just make specific builds and then run them out in the field for some footage. But, uh, but anyways, thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time for another Grim Dawn skill video guide thing. Anything in the game. <coughs> Crap. <coughs> oh, I just ate an oatmeal cookie, and that was a piece of cookie getting caught in my throat. So the other big class synergy is with the Warlock. Or... I'm gonna fucking bash my brains in.